Waiguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Waiguru Ji Ki Fateh and welcome to an all new encounters on a new platform here at Akal Channel we welcome you as the Sangha to participate, join us as we have an ordinary conversation with extraordinary people as always, we're going to bring you people in current affairs who are relevant at the time for big stories and no bigger place than Akal Channel and the Encounters team. So without further ado, let me introduce you to today's guest. Uh, his name is Taj Diol. He's the um, chief editor at a production house, an independent production company called Grayskull Media. Um, they've made documentaries. This is their second one that we're going to be discussing today. They've made one um, that, that focused on the events of last year um, surrounding the issue of interfaith marriages and Ananda colleges um, in Godore up and down the country and at the moment they're working on a what some might consider controversial subject which is Bapu Surat Singh and his hunger strike um, ostensibly for the release of Sikh political prisoners in Punjab. So without further ado let me introduce you to Taj Dal. Thanks for having me on. Encounters. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, if my introduction was not sufficient, can you explain to us <laughs> who you are, what Grayskull Media actually is? Okay, so um, I've worked in television for a long time as an editor, um, and Grayskull Media is kind of a brainchild of mine from about seven or eight years ago uh, when I first started, um, and uh, I always wanted to make uh, sort of cutting edge. Uh, television and film. Um, it's kind of why I got into the industry in the first place. Yeah. Um, and um, to be honest, it was it was born out of um, a realization that sort of mainstream media doesn't doesn't quite cover all the stories that people care about. Um, and you see it time and time again. To be honest, where really important stories are ignored. A perfect example probably be last year um, when. Uh, uh, Jagmeet Singh had to uh, interrupt a BBC program um, to tell the BBC to cover, to cover what was happening in, in, in India at the time because it was a big deal. Um, and then there was a, yeah, a small story on the, on the news website. Um, so that's the kind of thing that, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't say we'd cover exactly that, but, uh, and, and certainly I won't, I won't pretend that we're only interested in stories from the Sikh community. I'm Sikh. Um, as well, but, um, but ob and obviously I care about stories from within my own community, which has kind of led me to to sort of realise that Sikhs in the media not really not really well represented uh, o overall. Um, we're represented well on channels like this, and programmes like this. This is yeah. this is great. We've had and, to create our own media. Yeah, so we, so we've got our own channels, but there's a reason why um, we're having to fight against the curve to tell the stories that we want to. Um, we're having to kind of uh, pioneer it, whereas it's not coming. The the the, the, um, the will to make uh, film uh, media uh, about the subject matter that we care about, yeah. the deep issues that we care about. Would you say, with with regard to what you're saying about representation, right, and lack of, right, um, would you say that was a misrepresentation? Because some of the stories they are covered, especially every year June um, and every year November. We have stories about the genocide in November. We have stories of Operation Blue Star, and normally the narrative rests on why Blue Star was necessary, not whether it was illegally carried out or whether it was an absolute um, genocide of, of the people that were gathered there, mm -hmm. how they were allowed to gather there, um, and curfew clamped after their arrival within the precincts of the Golden Temple. Um, would you say it was misrepresented that we are represented, but just not? The narrative's not in our control. I mean, it's a very good question, um, and I can kind of see it from both sides. So, the reason I say that Sikhs are not well represented—that that, 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 that's how I would how I would phrase it. Um, I mean, if you look across the kind of plethora of media, so if you start with, uh, you know, if you if, if you ask a non-Indian person, it, m m maybe let's go one further than non-Sikh. You ask a non-Indian person. Yeah. Um, what do they know of Sikhs? Uh, most of what they know will probably come from sort of your, your comedy sketch shows on, uh, on the BBC, maybe. And the rest of it will be from films where Sikhs are kind of qu quite, uh, quite loosely represented, like maybe something like Bend It Like Beckham, uh, which was really popular. 
uh, or, or what the what the Bollywood film industry does, which generally is uh, kind of put Sikhs in this kind of court jester role. Um, oh. That might sound very that might sound like a real generalization, yeah. um, but to be honest with you, uh, across the uh, across the plane of of, of that cinema, that's kind of what you see. You do see the occasional interesting story being told, uh, but the but to be the Sikh contribution to the world wars. I mean, yeah, I mean stuff like that is completely is stuff like that is is covered, but the BBC covers it co covers it quite yeah. well generally. Um, but it's not covered in the same way that, say, uh, I don't know, a, 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 a story about uh, you know modern day terrorism, uh, the, for example. It, it, it's not covered in the same way. Um, I've always found that uh, ma the mainstream media go for the controversial stuff. So um, I was told this is you know I won't mention any names or anything like that. But I was once told by a, a channel executive. Um, I, and I asked, I said, how come there's not many programs about Sikhs? Like real, you know, deep programs about Sikhs, good programs. Um, and he pretty much said, you know, when the, day, the day you start dropping bombs on people and blowing yourselves up, you'll, you'll see, start to see more programs being made about you. Now, I was quite hurt by that, but at the same time, I could see exactly what he meant because until you're, until you're sort of noticeable in that way, uh, then you kind of have to fight your own corner to get to get coverage. Now, in terms of the misrepresentation, um, I would I, you know I, I'm I'm not sitting on the fence here, but I can see that side of it. To be honest, um, I can see that uh, you know that, that that there are good representations of Sikhs uh, in the media. It, there are some examples, um, but unfortunately, they're few and far between. And and you know our big channels, so in the, in, in television, taking television for a second. Um, so our big UK channels. Um, I mean, let's go with the BBC as an example. Um, that same program that I just mentioned that, uh, earlier, that Jagmeet Singh yeah. uh, had to interrupt. Um, I mean, if you watch that debate carefully, you'll see that he was ambushed because, and and he was set up to be ambushed. He wasn't there as a. Uh, expert on Sikhi, which is what he is. Uh, well, I, I, I mean, in my opinion, he is. He, he's got a very deep knowledge. He's knowledgeable. For yeah, sure. he's, he's got deeper knowledge than me, definitely. Um, <laughs> so I have you? I know, sure. Yeah. Um, but 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 the fact is, um, he he was he was there. He was set up because you could see it quite clearly that um, there was an agenda uh, from the very beginning, which was we're going to talk about uh, how. Uh, interfaith marriage is great and people should be able to be with who they want to be and the whole point is that's not what he was well, standing against. Well the narrative against. was preset. Yes exactly and, and, and the very very short time that he was allowed to actually talk about the teachings unfortunately he wasn't able to get all the points out um, and then following that he was he was just ambushed by people like Edwina Curry who you know I mean I know more about Sikhi than Edwina Curry I think most Sikhs would as well um, so I'm not sure she has the qualifications to comment on stuff like that but she was allowed to quite openly mm. as I well. I think the, the, the conversation was more in regards to British society and yeah. uh, societal values. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand so that. But, yeah. I th but I think that's where it got misconstrued because the whole point was he, his, he was trying to talk about it from a religious perspective. Oh, the issue was very specific yeah, yeah. to the Sikh and Anand Karaj yes. and whether interfaith couples yeah. were... were um, yeah, which we've, made a film, which, we, which we've made a film about, which is still being made. Uh, so did you make your film yeah. um, before or after that, that event? Oh, we, we were already making it. So we've been, th this film's been in production for about a year. Right. Um, is it in post-production now? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's at the finishing stage. Um, but but, it, but uh, yeah, it, we, were already, we were already making this film. So, uh, and I remember sitting down on that Sunday morning because I, I'd, I'd, I'd received a message from someone saying, oh, uh, Jagmeet Singh's going to be on yeah. the BBC tomorrow. So, oh, great. So I, I got up early to watch it. I wouldn't normally get up that early on a Sunday. Uh, to be honest, um, but I did, um, and uh, and decided to watch it. And it was uh, literally like from the word go. Like as soon as they started the program, I just turned to my wife and I said, "They're going to eat him alive." Like that's it. He's he he's there to be yeah. crucified. That that's what he's there do for. Do you feel? Uh, do you have you listened to um, sort of BBC Asian Network? There are other channels. Yeah, but the BBC Asian Network, when they cover um, Sikh issues, yes. Do you feel that it's the same? The narrative is preset, and regardless of whichever talking head um, approaches them, 
uh, and tries to alter the narrative, it's always the same narrative. Do you think that the media, in, in, in respect to the BBC, and in respect to many issues, not just Sikh issues, we can talk about absolutely anything, mm. the war on terror, um, Israel and Palestine, any of these issues, the BBC has a set narrative. Uh, um, do you feel that, that that's, that's true? It's, again, it's a very interesting point. Um, I would say that sometimes, yes, there is a set narrative. That example that we've touched on twice, yeah. that one is a clear and you know an obvious one. Um, however, there are times when some of these things happen, and I, I kind of I kind of know this from personal experience yeah. working in television, where these things do sometimes happen because of lack of research. When I say lack of research, I mean. Um, a lot of the time the researchers that are employed uh, are, very qu are really quite junior um, and a lot of them wouldn't understand the complexity of some of these issues. Yeah, but nuances. I mean, the, fir like the first time, for example, that I heard about this Anandkaraj issue, my instant reaction was, oh my God, why are people doing, why would people do that? Why would you interrupt someone's wedding? Why would you do that? That's, that's terrible. It was my f first reaction. Yeah. Um, but then, of course, you read a bit more about it and you realise, hang on, there's something, more, there's something deeper going on here. There's a, there's, a, there's a discussion to be had. It's not just uh, do you side with this side or that side. Um, there's some analysis to be done. So as far as, far as I'm aware, um, yes, it is sometimes a clear agenda against someone to just say, look, we'll put this person in front of the camera as a kind of tick check box. So Absolutely. to say, to, to say, look, uh, we had a discussion about Sikhi and we had a Sikh there who knows about Sikhi and that's it. But at no point was it a kind of we need to talk about this topic, so let's get this person to enlighten us on, on the kind of the, the, the complexity of it, the depth of it. It's more, we're going to talk about this generally from our own knowledge and point of view, and we're just going to bring this person in occasionally, and maybe we're going to you know, try and challenge them on a few points um, to try and make them look a bit silly. And unfortunately, that, hap that does happen a lot. You know, I, I, w I, won't, I, won't, I, I we won't beat around the bush. It does. Um, but at the same time, uh, like I said, at times it's 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 actually more ignorance than um, than an agenda. Uh, it's 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 ignorance towards what something's really about, rather than saying, oh, let's let's get this person, you know, let's make them look silly, or let's let's push our agenda on this person. Well, you say it's it's not an agenda in your opinion. Well, um, I, no, no, no I, I said sometimes it can be. Yeah. Depend, depend. Like it, I, I wouldn't be able to comment on every situation because no. I haven't seen them all. But um, some of I've seen examples of both where it's where you can say yeah, yeah, they they wanted to they wanted to get this guy or they wanted to use this guy to sort of push a point across um, as the bad guy. Um, and then other times it's just a lack of understanding and generally a lack of research has gone into the program like an, an, another example from the same debate yeah and i don't want to talk too much about that film because you know i'd like well, to talk about the other film yeah yeah, yeah. but the, but but the, but but, but an, another example from that film is um when bbc4 uh, sorry radio 4 uh did uh, the today program and they had a slot about this very issue and they invited shamsher singh who's a very knowledgeable guy uh, National uh, Sikh Youth yeah. Federation, a uh, very nice guy as well, um, and, uh, and 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 he he was on there as you know a sort of spokesperson, if you like, um, for the sort of you know, the religious side of the debate. But then on the other side, they brought this lady called Anita Kapoor. Now, absolutely, a lot of people will know that name and will know. Uh, the things that she said, and she said a lot of things to her Sikhs in the past as well. She's not a Sikh. Well, yeah, yeah. So, so the, on to that's it. That's it. So, the, so the, this, the, this is where it gets it gets very, uh, very messy. So, uh, the BBC have done it twice. So they so they did it that day. So they call. I think they they brought her on as some sort of expert on on, on the Punjabi community. I think they weren't as bad. Uh, today program had a little bit more research done, um, but that other one, the um, the Sunday Morning Live that we talked about yeah. earlier. Uh, they actually credited her as a, a Sikh counsellor. Yeah. Now that's incredibly misleading because Very she's right. not on the Sikh council. She's not a counsellor anymore, to my knowledge, uh, because she made some really horrendous comments about women, um, which I won't say again, yeah. which I won't repeat. Um, and, uh, and, and also, uh, she's not a Sikh, so it's like it's wrong on three counts. Um, and she shouldn't, you know, apart from having an opinion, I mean, I have an opinion, 
So should I be invited on a on a show like we that? We all have opinions. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Apart yeah. from having an opinion, which everyone can, um, she had no real credibility to be there. And it, I wouldn't even blame her because everyone's entitled to say what they think. Um, it's the fault of whoever's done the research and said, hey, uh, here's this woman, Anita Kapoor. And it's almost like they've just gone, oh yeah, we've had her on before, so we'll get her again. Rather than saying, hang on, is she actually they relevant? Check the phone book and see That's who's, who's That's who it. they have. So, uh, ha -ha what, 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 yeah, you sort of go to research, oh, f find me a seat, please. Yeah. Wh whichever one, any will do, doesn't matter. Right. And, it, and it, it's not good enough, and really. Because it, it definitely doesn't sound I, Muslim. <laughs> <a seat. laughs> well, like, like, I'm here to talk about my films. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but I wouldn't, if you, if you invited me on and said, let's talk about these really deep issues in Sikhi. Ideological issues. I would say, yeah. I'm really sorry, I'm not qualified. Not I, ca person. I can't, because, because I'm not. I'm not that person, and I would give you ten names that could do it instead uh, of me. Um, so you know. So why she accepted that? That well, yeah. Th I mean, th invitation. Th there is that. There is, th that, there is that. There is that. That's it. Yeah. There um, is that. But with regard to your films, yes. you've made the film um, regarding arranged marriages, uh, uh, um, interfaith, interfaith marriages. Yeah, yeah. Was well, interfaith and non courage? Non courage. Quite specific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Moving on, you've yeah. now taken on. An even, if if there is, if it's possible, <laughs> an yeah. even bigger um, task yeah. of getting the narrative of Bapu Surat Singh, the hunger striker, yeah. Sikh political activist, um, an octogenarian, into the wider public by making a documentary about his um, current campaign. Yes, which has been 500 days plus. Uh, yeah, almost 600 strike. actually. Yeah, yeah, we're approaching the. I, th I believe today, I believe um, uh, previous weekend was yeah. 575 days okay. uh, we reached. So, uh, so yeah, nearly 600 days. Um, yeah, it's a massive film. Why a massive did that film. become important to you? Well, issues to do with human rights and anything to do with miscarriages of justice. Um, you know, uh, a state being... Um, if you like uh, bullying certain people, um, that kind of thing's always interested me because. Uh, but has it? Has the state bullied people? Well, I, I, it's a very interesting question. Y um, I mean, it's possible. I, I, I don't, I don't want to say yes or no because, um, on the one hand, I have my own feelings, but on the other hand, uh, from a from from a filmmaking point of view, uh, we're not tasked to pass judgment like that. We're our job. If you want to be, you know, if you want to be the the sensible media, the real media, yeah. how media is meant to be, uh, you're meant to be right in the middle of things. So you're meant to tell things as you see them, not as you interpret them. Absolutely. Um, so my personal feelings on it are, uh, I mean, they're very, you know, they're, they're, they're very much uh, interlinked with uh, 1984, which you've already mentioned. So that's like a that's a massive thing for me. That's that's one of the one of the things growing up that kind of made me feel like I, 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 should, I should use my, my skills that I've learned in the media uh, in some way to try and make people aware of this because Sikhs know all about 1984. Funnily enough, not all Sikhs, I, I find that surprising, but most Sikhs you meet, they know about it. Yeah. Uh, but do they all have the same narrative? Some of them do, some of them don't. I mean, th there's th there's lots of lots of different opinions, but generally people are, are are of the same opinion, which is that what happened is uh, you know it, it, it was it was genocide. What happened in nineteen in, in, in November nineteen eighty four? Let's be yeah. clear about that. Uh, was was genocide, but um, that's a big word, and uh, you know we, we we that's my personal opinion. So I'm not I'm not, you know, that, um, I'm not uh, trying to trying to trying to say anything uh, more than that, but. Um, a lot of people don't agree with that, um, and certainly non-Sikhs would have no idea about it. And, and you know, I can I can probably say to the person, um, the, all the people I've met in television, that I have ended up speaking to about this topic, uh, either had literally no knowledge of it, or the knowledge they had has come from, you know, the BBC documentary that uh, Son Sonia Deol made, yeah. um, which 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 was good to a point. Um, but you know, didn't it really explore the issue properly for me? Um, Did you think that was inadequate? It's on Adil's effort. Yeah, because it. Well, I, d I don't want to be mean to her because her film was very good, but her film was her film was about her. Th I think this was the problem. So, her, so story. So, yeah. So th 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 this was the problem. I think I think it was mislabeled and 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 kind of. Um, 
I, th I think the problems came from, from when it was produced because it's a film about her personal experiences, about her personal feelings on the subject and on her religion and finding faith and stuff like that. And that's really cool. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But it wasn't an exploration into what happened in 1984. It wasn't. Um, so... I, I think it'd be unfair to just say, oh, it's a terrible film. It's not, it's not a terrible film. It's a terrible film if, if you say, hey, here's a, here's a, a case study of 1984. Yeah, then it's that's terrible That's what it was billed as, though. Yeah, so yeah. So, that, with so that's the problem. Remit, yeah. It was a bad film. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, 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 if, you, so, so, so if, it, if you say, right, this, is, this film is about 1984 and what happened when, when the army, Indian army attacked the Sikh temple, uh, the uh, Harmandar Sahib temple, um, then you'd say, yeah, okay, this, this is a terrible film. But... Um, well, well, okay, not a terrible film, but it, it's, it, it's only scratched the surface of, of what, what you could actually uncover about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then on the other hand, if you just say, well, this is, a, this, this is just a personal journey, someone learning about their faith and learning about this horrible thing that happened 30-odd you know, years ago, um, then it's not so bad. So I'm not, I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not sticking up for anyone or trying to say that it was, it was great. I'm just saying I think sometimes she gets a bad rap. Um, in, in that way, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, um, I don't completely agree with people who just kind of condemn what what, what was done. I think, I think, it, I think, it, as you said, if you look at the remit, yeah, okay, w wasn't great. But if you look at, uh, if you look at it from another perspective, as a personal experience, yeah, it was was was, was quite an interesting film. I wouldn't, wouldn't say any more than that. Um, but but just following on from what I was saying, so all the people that non Sikh people that I talk to that hear about it. I mean that's all they know of it. They know they might have seen that that program and they might have read a couple of things here and there, but they don't know any like it, it, it there's no knowledge about it. Whereas the Jewish Holocaust is like a massive you know, it's like it's almost like you say the word Holocaust and everyone knows what that is and they know that it's what happened, you know, during the Second World War and what the Nazis did to the, the Jewish community in Europe. That's you know, I, and I completely agree with that. But the problem is that, that that's all people seem to know about when it comes to genocide. I mean, it, you look at the Armenian people; how long they've been fighting to get to get a recognition. I mean, yep. that's like a, over a hundred years, um, almost. Yeah, yeah, almost a hundred years. So, um, and 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 that that is like one of the most diabolical things that happened in history. Um, but even now, the you know, Turkish government won't won't sort of no say has. it's genocide. That's the thing. You know? No yeah. government, so the, the French, so the, not the, so the, so the, the these, these are all these issues that I'm really interested in. I'm interested in all of these things because um, I think that, I think sometimes what we're taught at school as being history, you know, it's true and it's right and, you know, and everything else, but sometimes some of the facts are left out for you to kind of make your own mind up about things occasionally. To make a clean cut narrative, That's basically. It. Yeah, yeah. So it needs a beginning and end. Yeah, uh, um, and sometimes there is no end. That's the whole point. That's the thing. Look yeah. at the Israel conflict. But they set you, you on, a, on a in a path yeah. where you have a preconceived idea that you think, but it's actually been planted within you yeah. because of the narrative yeah. that this is the way things go. Now you're completely yeah. um, Unfortunately, this mm. does have a beginning, middle, <laughs> and end. Yeah. We're at the middle, right. so we're going to move over now and okay. give you some adverts uh, and take a short break. Don't go away. We're coming straight back, and we're going to discuss Bapu Surat saying the relevancy of his hunger strike. Taj's movie and uh, hopefully much more. So we'll see you after the short break. back to Encounters uh, here at Carl Channel. We're still with uh, Taj Deal of the uh, Great School Media. We're going to discuss Baji, your um, forthcoming documentary that you're yes. producing at the moment. Um, tell us a little bit about that. What lengths have you gone to to um, wow. procure <laughs> footage for this, for this project? Um, <laughs> a pretty great, fairly, fairly great length I would say. Um, We've definitely taken the first steps. So, um, where we're at the point where we're now asking other people to help us, 
um, we have already done a lot of work uh, on this film. So um, I think you, I think you know, just before the break, you were asking me about uh, what made me interested in the case of Abu Surat yeah. Singh. So um, to answer that question, which I'm not sure I did, um, it's all, it's all wrapped up in in Sikh issues. So 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 I f I feel quite strongly about. Uh, issues of human rights. I always have uh, cases of miscarriages of justice and, and the like. Um, and this just kind of hit a tone with me when I when I read about it. I think I might have read about it a bit later than a lot of people. So, um, you know, I think it was around sort of October or November. And I don't, he started his hunger strike in in January. So, were you aware of the previous hunger strikes? There yeah, were two previous. I was. Yeah. So 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 so, so I'd I'd heard um, I'd heard about um, Gurbakhsh Singh. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'd heard about that one. And I know Babu Suet Singh's one was sort of a follow-up to that, um, and I and I could and, you know and, and I understood what was happening. But I think I think the big thing that grabbed mine and a lot of people's attention is the way it was pushed on social media. Um, I think it was pushed very heavily, um, which you know, on the one hand, it's, it's kind of sad because you, you sort of think an issue that big shouldn't have to be pushed on social media. People should just know about it. On the other hand. Uh, I think it's a great way of reaching out to people, and yeah. we have. I mean, that, that's that's how we've got as far as we have making making films w that without. Kind any of harks back to the the media side of things. Yeah. The, 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 the media. The reason you say that if it shouldn't have to be pushed on social media. Yeah. Is because we should know about it. Yeah. It's because that media that should be informing us about it yeah. isn't informing us about it. Well, exactly. So I think I think we have a we have an issue where seek stories unless they. Uh, are in some way massively controversial. Yeah. Um, are kind of ignored, really. Um, whereas you know, some someone goes on hunger strike for twenty odd days. Um, at, you know, some somewhere else in the world where, you know, where th where there is some attention and, and it gets massive coverage. But there's a guy who's in you know six hundred days. Yeah. And we're yet to see anything on the mainstream media, I mean, you know, apart from you know some of the Indian media and uh, the Sikh media. Those disrupted weddings. Yeah, it's disrupted it's weddings, it's make, make, make news BBC News. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, th that, that's that's also really quite sad, to be honest. But so you've been to Ludhiana? Yes. <laughs> DNC in particular? We have, yeah. So we, so we went, we we got in touch with um, Babu Surat Singh's family. Um, so w when I became really interested in the story, um, I decided that, that we should do something with this. And I didn't want to make like just a you know a video for YouTube because all due respect to people who who do that it's fantastic and it raises awareness to to Sikhs to non Sikhs not so much um, and unfortunately you know a, a two minute video about you know this this little old Sikh man somewhere in in Punjab uh, who's not eaten for six hundred days. Um, may cause, you know, may raise an eyebrow, but it doesn't do what, what something like, uh, I'm trying to think of an example, uh, I mean, some of the really cutting edge documentaries I've seen recently, uh, Blackfish, which is about, I know yeah. it's about a completely different subject, but, but it's about orca and, and, and how they live. I mean, yeah. if someone made a two minute YouTube video about what SeaWorld were doing and their breeding program and everything else, um, I don't think SeaWorld would have stopped their breeding program, but they have, they uh, have be because that film was, has gone massive. Well, it's it, it's exploded. destroyed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost. Um, but, but, but the thing is, it, it just shows you the power of, of media yeah. it, when it's done properly. Um, there's the lots that's... Inconvenient truth did the same yeah, yeah. For, the, for the environment. Exactly, yeah, yeah. There's, there's lots that's done in the Sikh media, in the Punjabi media, which is great, which is really good, and by independence as well. The problem is when it's not at that level of being able to be on something like a Netflix, being able to be distributed in a cinema, being able to be uh, seen at a film festival, for example, uh, when it doesn't have that skill or that that range of... Uh, that of production level. The complexity, the yeah, the yeah. production level, yeah, that's it. It's production level and it's storytelling. I mean, yeah. that's the big thing. The so it's how you tell a story. You know, I could tell you a story in ten different ways, and maybe nine out of those ten will be really boring, yep. and, the, and one of them will just be like, "Oh wow, that's now I know what that story's about," and that's what we're looking it's to do. It's focusing the impact. That's it. Um, yeah. Of the of the narrative. And cinema itself. does that better than anything. Yeah. Um, 
because there's one, you know, you can raise awareness. So I can tell you about an issue right now. But it's now. having the footage as well. Yes. How did you get That's that it. footage? <laughs> okay, I see what you're getting at. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we, so we, um, we were a bit naughty. We, we, um, we snuck in to the hospital, um, and we had a uh, camera kit with us, and we went in and uh, and, and we filmed a really deep, uh, really long, um, and uh, really in engaging interview with Bubbles Who Singh. Which is brilliant. I mean, I watched it a load of times, and I just think, wow, that's, I can't believe we got that content. Yeah. Um, and he was. He, he you know, j just to tell you a bit about him. I mean, there's only so much you can get from reading about him. Yeah. Um, and then when you meet him, you realise just how amazing the guy is because he's not playing. No, he's really not. I, I mean, a, a big problem that I found when trying to put the word out about this film is there's a lot of cynicism. A lot of cynicism, there's a lot of like apathy. sort of finger pointing. Yeah, and apathy is a very good word. There's a lot of people who sort of say, you know, uh, it's 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 not really it's it's not a real hunger strike because he's eaten. You know, but the thing is, if you if you look at the details of what's happened when he's been in control of what happens to him, he's not eaten, he's not drank a drop of water. That's what's happened. He has drunk water, isn't he? Well, no, he hasn't. But, but when he's been in control of the situation, he's not done any of that. He's been on hunger strike because he said. Let me die. That's what he said. Um, one I of was the things. the impression he, d he was taking water. One, one of the things he said to me was, yeah. um, was that uh, they won't let me live and they won't let me die. Yeah. Which, which that really touched a nerve when he said that. Um, and you know, in my best Punjabi, I tried to probe him on it as well. Um, but, but he, you know, it, that just that was sort of etched in my mind after that day, because if you think about it, that's kind of what's happened. So. He'd been on this hunger strike, and it's like, well, okay, if you want to ignore him, then just let him do it, and and and, and eventually he'll pass away, and that's fine. But they don't want to do that because then he becomes a martyr, yeah. Um, and then people will follow the cause, so they so so so, so maybe so fear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then the other thing that's happening is he's been arrested about five times, and each time he's been detained. Uh, Goggi, his son, uh, told me that he gets. He gets given about eight or nine injections on the way to, to the yeah. hospital. No one tells him what's in those injections or what they are. Um, and then, as we know, he's been force fed a bunch of times. So that's why when, when people sort of come and say, oh, how can it be 600 days? No one can survive 600 days. Well, no, they can't. But the fact is, he's been force fed on a bunch of occasions. Well, there's the Yassanese lady, Amrila. Yes. 16 years. Yeah, yeah. That's a real hunger strike. Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's not no fake either. That's, that's incredible, yeah. yeah. So, so when people say, oh, you can't do 600 days, well, you can, because there's an example right there. Um, but but, to, but to, to sort of go back to your question, um, you know, he, one, of the, one of the other things that, that we got from him, which, which I thought was really important to share, is um, he doesn't want to, he, or he's not doing this just for Sikhs. This is not about Sikhs. It's about human rights and what that means in India, and whether or not the right, the the, the right to live is being fully uh, given to people of all different, uh, you know, whether you're in a minority or a majority. Yeah. Um, and one of the things he said, that he, ref he sort of referenced slightly his letter to, that he wrote to the prime minister, yep. and uh, and in that he wrote um, that you know it's about someone. It, it, it's about the right for someone to live their life without fear of persecution, just for their beliefs or, what, or how they feel about something. Um, and I thought that was quite, that was quite quite big. And, it's and freedom of conscious. Yeah, conscience. that's it. And, and 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 he and he went. You know, he really he really you know he, he gave us some really good content on that as well. So good critics would argue. Yeah. That, in effect, he's holding the state to ransom. Okay. Using his life so uh, as the bargaining chip. Yeah. yeah. And he's demanding changes in the judicial processes of not only the Punjab state, but of various states, Gujarat and, and uh, mm -hmm. as an example of one. And that no state, no country, no government in the world could acquiesce to the demands of somebody holding them to ransom because it would set a precedent. Yeah. And all of a sudden you'd see a spate of hunger strikers all demanding various things. Yeah. Does that not sort of negate 
half of his impact? It's an inter again. It's a very it's a very interesting question. So, if we look at it from we look at it from the point of saying uh, a hunger strike. Uh, what does a hunger strike mean? So, a hunger strike is someone saying, "I'm gonna I'm gonna not I'm not gonna eat and I'm gonna drink anything until this happens." Yeah. Right. It's happened in the past. It'll happen again in the future. Um, I think the reality is that, and and I think even Bapuji knows this himself his hunger strike alone is not going to have that impact he knows that too it's not his hunger strike is not going to make someone in the indian government say right we're going to release all these guys now because that's that's not fair he's he, you know he's on a hunger strike we all know that's not going to happen yeah for the reason you said um i think the i think the point is that the hunger strike is to is to highlight what's gone wrong and what's gone wrong is there are some laws that have been established which are there to protect people which have then been reinterpreted to be used to kind of stifle people's freedom of speech freedom of expression are you talking about data yeah exactly so 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 th so those laws were created to protect people great but unfortunately they've now started the to be used the wording of those those laws they've, they've actually re they've lapsed they were they weren't renewed yeah yeah um but data from the outset in 1984, um, people like Amnesty International, um, Human Rights Watch, mm -hmm. had already condemned the wording of those, yeah. that they are open to misuse. Yep. From the outset, yep. from proposal mm -hmm. to becoming legislation, yep. they'd already been um, sort of demonized Called out. Yeah. Uh, as, as these yeah, yeah. terrorist affected um, and disrupted areas act mm -hmm. um, was going to be used for stifling yeah. debate and, and uh, human uh, freedom of expression. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. People were accused of saying the word Khalistan <laughs> was outlawed. Yeah. Uh, on the, uh, the, the accusation of you having uttered that word yeah. would see you in a, in a special court where yeah. you, know, you were guilty until proven innocent. Um, that's been called out. But the thing is, the, the, the critics would say that there are organizations um, at work in Punjab who are um, going through legal channels, right. utilizing the judicial process and uh, procuring the freedom, freedom yeah. of Sikh political prisoners mm -hmm. who are deemed Sikh political prisoners, but in you know, the cold light of day, they are convicted of crimes. That, that's where the state will stand. Yeah. And the majority of the world's nations and countries and governments yep. will accept that these people have been convicted of a crime, yep. um, regardless of the law under which they were convicted mm -hmm. and, and its feasibility. Or the judicial process as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So you've got a government that's saying that if you use the judicial processes, um, there is, you know, recompenses available. It, it is there. Justice is there. Um, there are organizations, one, which is Seek Relief, have utilized those judicial processes. They've procured or managed to gain the freedom of 247 prisoners over the last six or seven years. Mm -hmm. So is it necessary for Bapu Surat Singh to be on a hunger strike at all? It's a very good question. Um, is it necessary? I don't know. And, and I'm, not, I'm, not, um, I'm definitely not in a position to say yes or no. But what I would say is that when someone is when someone's that passionate about um, delivering people their human rights, um, it deserves attention. Oh, that, that's that's what absolutely. I would say, and that's that's all that we are trying to do. So we're not trying to we're not trying to set a precedent, or we're not trying to we're not trying to convince people that it's right or wrong. Um, we're trying to tell a story of an incredible guy who's 83. Um, and who hasn't eaten for, uh, or you know, who, who's on hunger strike for 600 days almost, um, and how many other people he's inspired, um, and that's all we're trying to do. We're, we're, that's all. That's all I'm interested in. I'm interested in in telling the story. What happens beyond that, or whether it's correct or not to go on hunger strike, I don't know. Um, what I can tell you is that um, there's a guy called uh, Anna Hazar 
who went on hunger strike. He did. I, I believe it was for about 60 days so or something. Days. Maybe, maybe was it 60? I, I d it maybe may have been less. I, I, I may be getting the figure wrong, yeah. but it was a very short time, and he got an incredible a amount. Short time. 60 days yeah, is a long yeah, time. I, I think, if indeed it I think was it might have been days. about two weeks actually. Yeah. I, I could be wrong about that. So. Um, and he got an incredible amount of media coverage, yeah. like an unbelievable amount. Um, it was on the news every day, basically. That was an anti-corruption drive. Yeah, that's it. And the fact that the fact that that story has been so extensively covered, but Bapu Surat Singh's has effectively been ignored. And when it has been covered, unfortunately, it's been kind of slandered where where possible. Yeah, you know, but by it's been communalized. Yeah, but his demands are communal, no. They are. I, seek I, free, seek political prisoners. Yeah, and no, I get it. I get it. But but he. But that was one of the things that, as I said, that was one of the things that he wanted to hammer home to me was that uh, it's not about Sikhs. It's it, it. Yes, it's about Sikhs right now. Yeah. What he's doing he's at this moment. Sikh yeah, yeah. However, his w what he's doing, the the essence of it, the the meaning behind it, is not just for Sikhs. It's for all minorities. I mean, you've personally endangered yourself. I mean, were you warned or anything? Were, were the people around you, when you went to Ludhiana, yeah. um, you're smuggling yourself into a hospital, you know, with kind of. video <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. Did nobody sort of warn you of, of the possible repercussions of doing that? Well, I mean, he, access to him is restricted, yeah? So just yeah, it is. Just so we know. I, I, yeah, I know. I, I, it is restricted. Um, he's guarded by, by, by the Punjab police. But to be honest with you, um, in terms of the, the, the risks and whatnot, I think at, at this stage, um, it, it's, almo it's almost like um, people are so uh, not bothered about him in the, in the wider scheme of things that uh, I, I think it would be like a drop in the ocean at the moment. I, I, I th I th Insignificant. I think, yeah, it, it, as in like, I don't think, I mean, you could say in danger. Yeah, we, you know, we, we might have got a telling off, we might have got a kit taken off us. I don't think that any more would have happened, if I'm being honest. I think you'd have been roughed up a little bit. I don't, well, I hope not. <laughs> um, maybe. Um, but, but the thing is, I think genuinely at the moment, uh, the reason, you know, that I'm, that I'm trying to sort of do fundraising, which we'll, we'll come to, hopefully we'll come to shortly. Yeah. Um, the reason that we're trying to do a crowdfund and get this film made with a crowdfund, and the reason I haven't gone to a or have, or ha you know, have been successful in going to a, you know a bigger network who has lots of money, or, or you know a, a, f um, a, f a film distributor or whatever, um, is because no one's at the moment no one's kind of uh, no one's taking up this story in that way. No one's taking it to heart outside of the Sikh community, yeah. um, and that's what we're hoping to achieve. So uh, we're hoping to show that it's more than just. Uh, you know, a guy that's on hunger strike. There's so much behind this. There's so much, so much context that people don't know about, uh, which needs to be explored. You, do, you, I don't know if I should be saying this, but <laughs> you, you've worked for a major broadcasting corporation in the UK. Some. Yeah. Um, you're not the only Asian. No, to, to no, work not. there. There no. are many, many. There's lots. Who work at big, big production yep. companies here. Where are all the other documentary makers? Um, it's really interesting. Uh, I w what I would say is um, the reason that there's not many more people trying to do or trying to make films about topics like this is because a lot of the time, I mean, it, there's, a, there's a few reasons. So one of them is sometimes our uh, really important stories like this, they get hijacked by people in terms of people who want to push a certain agenda. That, that does happen. The other thing that, the other problem that comes, uh, and, and, and then that instantly turns some people off, they just go, oh, I don't, I'm not interested in that. Even though it's a, it is something interesting. It is something that to, needs to be explored. Yep. And then the, the other thing that does happen sometimes is, and if you sort of look at viewership, more, you know, th that will tell you the reason. So. If you're if you're someone who watches movies, so I w I've always loved watching movies. If you ask me the kind of movies I love to watch, I'll tell you. Um, but you know, d and and documentaries as well, especially. But but the thing is, would I would I be watching channels like this one, all, all, all due respect, as a young guy, um, maybe not particularly in touch with my faith personally. Um, 
but but would I would I be watching a Carl channel or any of the other Sikh channels uh, on a Saturday afternoon when I'm sitting at home? No, I wouldn't. But I have a vested interest, and I have you know I I do watch the Sikh channel sometimes for you know for 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 reasons of uh, you know be, you know the filmmaking reasons and, and and others, and obviously I like to stay up to date with with what's happening in the community as well. I can't say the same for people like me in the media who are my age or younger because if I'm being honest, if I didn't have that interest already, I wouldn't. I'd watch something completely different. There's no way I'd tune into a, a Sikh channel. And the reason is that there's, I, I would say there's not enough, there's not enough that brings people in, um, there's not enough that brings people in and makes them interested in, 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 in the content. Uh, from from outside a religious perspective, that that's the problem. Yeah, that and is it's not problem. that's not a criticism. That's just that's just where we are at the moment. Yeah. Um, so I think if if that happens, I think you'll find that there'll be a lot more people that will be uh, interested from who have the kind of skills I have. That's the mission. Yeah, that's the mission. People who have the kind of skills I have who want to tell stories like this. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. Wow. Okay. Um, this week, the first um, in in many encounters to be had on the Akal channel. Um, that is a problem. The problem is apathy. Yep. The problem is uh, non-coordination um, between you know, talented individuals um, and their media skills uh, um, and their, their own community. Um, there is a gap between the two. We're going to try to fill that. We're going to try to hopefully connect one to the other um, and make some changes. We're going to need your help and Taj needs your help. Yeah. Um, so, you know, th as he alluded to earlier, there is a GoFundMe um, um, campaign Indi Indiegogo. going on. Indiegogo. Indiegogo, yeah. Indiegogo. Uh, so if you can, you know, Google Grayskull Media uh, and look at their website, web page, I'm sure it'll... I, I actually, I can, I, can, I, can, I can tell you, so the, um, the, the, the website to visit is hungerforhumanity.org. Uh, and the reason we called the film that is because it's not just about Sikhs, it's about humanity. Humanity and human so rights. And hungerforhumanity.org. And if you'd like to get involved and help us out um, with the film, uh, it'd, be, it'd be amazing. So, thank Brilliant. you. That's all there is for Encounters this week. Welcome back. Wai Gurji Ka Khalsa. Wai Gurji Ki Fateh.